So we are back, and with Pina Gallery talking about the WWE booking, and since we had a show on January 1st, and people were like, oh, when did WWE ever do that? They've actually done that a lot more than uh, not. And what you need to think about is that there are a bunch of New Year's Day shows that have actually gone on to some success. Now, Pina Gallery, I want you involved in this, and I okay. think you know what building this is. Pina Gallery likes buildings, like he has an architecture degree. What is this building? That is, uh, isn't that the Sumo Hall? No, it is not. It is in Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, that's the, uh, that's... It's, it's the Omni. Oh, the that's Omni, right. It's the Omni Coliseum. The old, the old Omni. Yes. So, um, this is significant in this discussion because even way back, especially in the NWA Mid-South, uh, Georgia Championship Wrestling, which we'll talk about even more so, and even WCW, New Year's Day shows happen quite often, mm -hmm. and we've I've seen shows that date back to like the late fifties of stuff that actually happened in the Omni. And I think what a lot of people need to realize is that this was pro wrestling mecca mm -hmm. back in the day. The Omni was one of the biggest stadiums in Atlanta, and Atlanta was the lifeblood of Southern wrestling, mm -hmm. like. Bar none, there was no bigger building. If you were wrestling in the Omni, you're essentially wrestling. This was Madison Square Garden mm -hmm. in the South. Right. So there have been a bunch of house shows that have done this. Pay-per-views are, they were, a lot of the shows that we saw within the Omni, especially on New Year's Day, they were not televised shows. And what they did for these were... Um, they were super shows. They were super card, big time super shows right. with titles on the line. But what the difference was is that they would pack this building because it was fan appreciation night. Uh -huh. And that is what the Omni, and this is why I want to talk about this, right. because Georgia Championship Wrestling, generally their ticket prices were around 25 to $30 for each show for Georgia Championship Wrestling, for Jim Crockett Promotions. Mm -hmm. And for this, I talk about them because this was almost very much a southern thing mm -hmm. were new year's day shows okay because they always started the new year's day with a big banger show right always they always did it and there was no other promotion that really did that for a couple of reasons number one down in like where we live in las vegas and in that area wrestling wasn't as Big. Mm -hmm. um, AWA did a little bit of that, and I, I think they actually did that in the old um, – uh, what was the um, the Denver's the Denver Stadium before Pepsi Center replaced it? Um, uh, Nichols. Yeah, McNichols Arena. They did run a couple of shows on New Year's Day mm -hmm. in McNichols, but it never really became as successful as it was here because they did it for years and years. For the fan appreciation show, they would sell tickets at like 5 to $10. Mm -hmm. And they would do big shows, and they would release new merchandise for those fans for fan appreciation night. Okay. So these would always get packed out right. for it's like ten to fifteen thousand people packing the Omni. Right. So it was always a really big thing because, and also they never ran shows around Christmas. Right. So they would take two weeks off for Christmas in that time, and then they would start fresh with your New Year's Day show. Okay. And that is why they did the fan appreciation. Right. like, you know, we're going to start off really big. You guys are the lifeblood of what we do. You know, Christmas off. Let's start with a really strong card. Let's start with really strong wrestling. Right. Obviously in the biggest arena at that time until the Omni was torn down in 1997? Something like that. Something like that. Yeah, the Omni doesn't exist anymore. So let's talk about the elephant in the room, which was New Year's Revolution. It was never held on New Year's Day, but it was always held really, really early January. Right. January 4th, 5th, and 6th yeah. were the three years that New Year's Revolution happened. Obviously, let's talk about 2005's New Year's Revolution, which was the first of its kind because they usually didn't do anything – um, at the beginning of January well, because, because you got of the Royal, Royal Rumble. Rumble. Yeah, the Royal Rumble around that time. Right. So this was kind of a weird show that they wanted to do. So some of the notable matches for this was the pay-per-view debut of Muhammad Hassan. He faced Jerry Lawler, which was kind of crazy because Jerry Lawler, Mid-South. Mm -hmm. So this was no nothing new. There was the Elimination Chamber match for the vacant world champion, Triple H won the... 
And uh, the other participants in that were Randy Orton, Batista, Chris Jericho, Chris Benoit, and Edge. You know who's who of wrestling. Mm -hmm. Hall of Famers. Big time stars. <clears throat> and this was kind of the first little experiment. And at this time, Wrestle Kingdom was not really a thing because right. we just did not have access to the internet to the extent that we do now. Right. I mean, tapes were still fucking traded at this right. point. 2006 was notable as well. This was the one that happened on January 5th. And this was the Elimination Chamber where John Cena retained the WWE Champion over Carlito, Chris Masters, Shawn Michaels, Kane, and Kurt Angle. So once again, who's who of wrestling? And this was the first year that Edge, being the first Money in the Bank cash-in, mm -hmm. cash-in Money in the Bank and won the war his first WWE Champion, leading to what you have there. Some other notable matches, the one that I really wanted to talk about was a Braun Panties Gauntlet match. Just keep in mind, this was 2006. Nope. <laughs> that would not fly today. No. Um, Ashley Massaro won the match, and she faced Candice Michelle, Maria, Tori Wilson, and Victoria with that Braun Panties Gauntlet match. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> very interesting. And then the final one as it relates to a pay-per-view as con is concerned was um, uh, 2007's. Mm -hmm where John Cena faced Umaga for the WWE Champion. John Cena not only retained that championship, but he beat Umaga and ended his undefeated streak. Because remember, right. Umaga was like uber, uber huge at that right. time. They kind of wish he won the WWE title, but, you know, it is what it is. Right. Rated RKO defeated DX because this was a reformation of DX time, and they, de they retained the World Tag Team Champions over yep. them. Uh, so... With those three events, we did not see the New Year's Revolution pay-per-view come back for many of years. Uh -huh. And here, this is why I say this, because there was actually a tour uh -huh. that actually ha excuse me, that happened in early 2020 called New Year's Revolution. Uh -huh. It started on the 3rd, and it ended prematurely in March. Right. It ended March 5th because... I think at that time they were going to be going to Ohio, yeah. and the Ohio governor issued a state of emergency with the COVID-19 pandemic, and you could not have gatherings with, like, 100 people or more. Right. And obviously, I, I don't think we really need to discuss any further what happened with this tour, but they were actually going to bring back New Year's Revolution as a recurring um, show that ran. Okay. And so that was I thought that was kind of cool. And it was a super show because both Raw and SmackDown superstars were going to be featured within right. this tour. Let's talk about um, some notable shows that just happened to fall on this show because we talked on, about on New Year's Day. On New Year's Day because we talked about the house shows and everything like that with WCW and that, but there were Raw's, SmackDown's, Impact Wrestling's um, ECW shows. Right. There were a lot of shows that have actually just fallen on New Year's Day for reasons. Mm -hmm. A lot of what they tried to do as it relates to these shows was to have highlight shows mm -hmm. and big moment shows. They right. never tried to have live shows. So, right. Or even if they want to do a show, they would have a pre-tape. Right. So they would do it on the 30th of December. Traditionally, WWE did that. They mm -hmm. do it pre-tape on the 30th for this show. Right. Because New Year's Eve shows, they've tried to do New Year's Eve shows. They never worked. Right. For some reason, New Year's Day shows always did really well. So we'll talk about a Raw's War that happened in 1997. Um, right. A lot of what happened with this was a um, number one contenders tournament for the WWF title. So they actually tried to make a go at having a bigger card for this. Um, some notable matches that happened here. William Regal defeated Stone Cold Steve Austin in a first round in this tournament with the help of Stephanie McMahon, who was the special guest referee in this match. Um, we had uh, Kane going over. I believe it was Big Show. We had a couple of other matches. Rikishi was really big at this time, so he won his match. And we had some other matches. There wasn't a whole lot that really went on at this time. Okay. As it relates to that. But a Raw's War, this was like the first time WWE tried to push a big thing. They had um they had like um WWE superstars and WWF um uh the the wrestling show that happened on Saturday mornings like back right. in the eighties. So they had those. 
but this was like the first live show that they tried to do. We had a SmackDown show where Rey Mysterio won the Cruiserweight Champion under the WWE banner a second time, beating Tajiri. Right. I thought it was the first time, but this was an example of a December 30th pre-tape show, hmm. and they just did not wrestle that night, but this was when SmackDown was pre-recorded. I think this was um, Thursday. Yeah. These were the Thursday shows. So that was kind of cool. And once again, there was, and I think we should end at this one, was a homecoming edition of AEW Dynamite where we had a couple of different matches as it relates to that. So, yeah, January 1st, Jacksonville, Florida. Um, I don't think there were people there. Were there people in January? No, I don't think there were. But there were a couple of big matches. There was a fatal four-way for the AEW Women's World Champion. Riho defended the championship successfully against um, Hikaru Shida, Dr. Brick Baker, and Nyla Rose. Mm -hmm. And the Elite, which was Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks, defeated the Death Triangle. And this was a live show. Right. So, and I'm, I'm going to end it with this. Not like a longer one, but like I said, with New Year's Day shows, companies are very, very tentative to use them depending on where they're going to be because what a lot of New Year's Day shows were was around the territory times. Right. And it was usually southern shows. Right. So AEW, being a southern show, are going to be promoting this a little bit more than others. Right. So I don't think there's an AEW show, but they've manipulated – stuff to work so they've had you know the new year's smash show they had the christmas show mm -hmm. so AEW is a little more flexible as it relates right. to when certain shows happen so we'll most likely see this again it just happened to fall on this day um i think wwe um based on what i saw with day one i think they should do a big refresh and instead of having money in the bank being a big show i think a day one show would be a little more no in print, no, no, <laughs> it's just so <laughs> negative. Um, I've, I've, I think New Year's Day shows are kind of interesting. I think there's a different dynamic with it, and I really hope we see more in the future. Um, especially with AEW, maybe AEW can do like a big special or something and take advantage of, um, especially that southern audience and really start promoting that, maybe even in Atlanta. So, when we come back, we're not only going to make WWE, I don't know how we're going to make that work, but we're going to do it, we're going to make that majestic again. We're going to make Pro Wrestling Majestic again. We're going to make Day One Majestic again. Okay.